Hello everyone, um, welcome episode 14, just, uh, continue on here, um, a lot of people are having, really coming to terms with what they're attached to, a lot of ego death, big, big ones and little ones, all in between ones, so it's really exciting, it's really good news that anybody that's being faced with any of that, that means you're being worked with, not, not, not something to be at odds with. So the more intense, the more possibility. That sounds crazy, but shamans found that the more difficult the student, the more likely they were, the closer to the edge they would go and almost kind of not make it. But the more difficult, the more powerful. And risk reward kind of deal right so it's okay if you're especially complicated case and doesn't mean you won't make it you're just gonna go through hell to get there we all have to go through it and, and the times are moving us toward it in our own little ways it could just be the emotions you haven't dealt with it's like a tidal wave it's an entire universe of energy for you to deal with the emotions you haven't dealt with that that in alone is enough, let alone the veil lifting and having to come to terms with different things. And I don't really concern myself with the information. I'm more concerned with your energy, your chakra line, your health, your holistic, your love for yourself, your capacity to have good feelings throughout your day that turn into hopefully vision, guidance, and beautiful connection to source so that you return home. Um, I hope that we all get on board with that, that we're just trying to get, be supportive of each one of us returning to source. There is a really powerful way to do that in a shamanic way. There's also a really, there, there's a way to go about this um, that is purely yours. And so as, as long as your imagination is on board, you can make your journey however you would like it. You customize it. You just have to be brutally honest with where you lack experience and what you're avoiding. And then everything will, will show up. So it really isn't shamanism at all. And that's what I'm here to promote, is that we take all the old stuff out, completely wipe the slate clean, and just use what we have as our tools to evolve our relationship with information our relationship with trust our relationship with you know like if we're all waiting around for things to happen based on information then we're not doing the work we're, we're or we're not we're not seeking knowledge knowledge isn't about information Knowledge is silent. Silent knowledge is where we came from. And we're going back to it. And we can do this again. We can head back into the realm of the rational after we spend more time in the silent knowledge. And, and maybe we can do it different next time. Without the same type of interference. Or maybe we can strike a deal with the type of interference that, that exists. But it's really not like that. This is more like a simulation in which a training ground in which we're here to evolve. And if we didn't have these intense, catalyzing, poetic, romantic, beautiful storylines to get involved in, we wouldn't. And we're here to be physical beings, even though we're not actually physical. We dreamt that. That's magic. The physicality is the magical part. The energetic part is the base. So if you have a disease or something, it's because it's energetic. 100%. Doesn't mean it hasn't manifested into the physical. It has, I'm sure. But otherwise you wouldn't know about it. But you don't necessarily want to have the doctor tell you what's happened to you. Because then that puts it in stone. And then you start to think from their perspective and the fear. And then your assemblage point moves to the same place as theirs. And so the... There are people that can help with that advanced stuff. And I've worked with shamans in helping people cure cancer with plant medicine. Um, it's powerful. It works. I've helped people 
reach others that can help them with soul retrievals with different systems of ways and, and you guys are all a lot of you are on board with high vibrational foods and how to alkaline and how to fast and how to dry fast and all of that works effectively as well but um you know we're each here to experience our relationship with death death is an advisor and so those of you that are experiencing a lot of death it's because you're getting to know your only true friend the only one that will tell you the truth the only one that will give you the actual feeling that you're trying to avoid. And so you're avoiding the people, typically, that, are, that could confront you and make you feel your death. And I just don't want you guys to avoid anybody. I don't want to avoid anybody. I'm still struggling with it. So <clears throat> just begin, you know, to... It's really in meeting strangers and getting outside of your comfort zone and learning to speak and, 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 and share with others in any conversation. Don't, don't limit yourself. You know, there's always a way to connect to someone. And then there's magic that can be shared and exchanged. And then we can learn to bridge these deltas, this division that's occurring, right? Because now today they said anyone that's anti-COVID or thinks the election was rigged as a terrorist, like they're going to go for it. So the division, the delta between the two realities is splitting super wide. And that's the exposure. I mean, we're headed, that's why we're getting into real exposure time is, and not, not that that matters, you guys, because this, whether we end up in a China social credit system or not, let's become magical beings. Let's become Shaolin ninjas that surf the internet and figure out how to connect and stay on top of our game and hone our dreaming attention and do dope shit don't let whatever plays out interfere with your purpose your path your path of heart so that's what i meant i've been said in some of the previous videos about purpose and your path of heart is separate from whether you know the events of man adjust to different moods we're heading into a new cycle Nature will win. The mo Earth Mother is going to bring balance to the situation. And so if you're an authentic, honest person seeking balance and you're willing to face yourself, you're going to have an incredible experience. If you're hiding from yourself, you're in a state of disharmony because you're being dishonest with yourself in whatever capacity, then this world will bring forth that for you to experience it's going to get scary so that you'll deal with it in one way or another you will whether it kills you or not in the moments in which you die you deal with it it's just don't do that wait do it now do it now and that's what this is for that's what this simulation is this is our training ground this is our platform this is our opportunity um to liberate ourselves from our ancestral line and heal our ancestral line so um, none of our parents gave us guidance that would give us access to source they didn't teach us about returning to source they gave us a religion or no religion or vague concepts or fear you know and so we get to thank them for the platform they gave us we got dropped in the wheel of time. We got given this opportunity. And we're going to be the black sheep in our family. And we're going to heal the ancestry line no matter what anyone says. Because there's nothing else to do. Even though they don't want us to succeed or whatever. The, the ones that died do. The posthumous ones do for sure. They're the ones that are supporting you. Those are your helpers. Align with your ancestry. It's okay. Don't be scared of it. But don't get all ritualized and tripped out and think that you're spiritual and special and do it in some crazy ass way. But you kind of have to at first because you, you got to run that crazy energy when you feel the connection. But eventually just like, you know, don't let the, the ceremonies and the rituals become what you are. Then, then you're enslaved to them. This is what happens. 
This is why I can't work with teachers. They're just, they end up slaves to their own systems. So I, I will always be moving and changing and adjusting and just dancing around. And I never will be, I won't know where I'm going. I don't want to know where I'm going. I have vision. I've seen things unlock. I know and I'm walking into it. But that's just because I trust. I don't ever know what I'm going to say before I say it. I don't know even what, but I don't need to anymore. I mean, I literally, <clears throat> so that shaman I worked with, that um, the old man that drove with his eyes closed asleep, snoring, like his, another aspect of his being was available to him. When, when you have that in whatever form, then you're not, you're in, you're operating from a different place. We all want access to that. Um, some people have access to that. They can slack line. They can, they're the greatest football players or soccer players or can do the most insane shit with intent. Like pure and unbending intent. But they're not liberating their perception and moving in between worlds and experiencing their six month year old self you know, perceiving the world from that perception. They're not navigating the dark sea of awareness, tracking feelings and looking for those that have crossed in the abyss. And so they're missing out. They've applied all of their unbending intent to one thing. And then that ego and their structure is built around that. Some of them will break free of that mold and hopefully liberate from the heaviness of that fame and money. There's a way to do that. Money doesn't have to be heavy. If you're just not hoarding it and you're using it in beautiful ways or um, if you're passionate really like there's passionate people that have tons of money and they're just so passionate and their application of that passion is just energy and so there's just cl there's cleanliness to it in fact i mean that's what we kind of all have to do is we need to step into the ring and play balls because the only ones playing ball are the hoarders the ones that are trying to rape and pillage and plunder so we all have to become warriors, go out into the field and fight. Orange, strawberry. <clears throat> Any way you can return to the mother. I don't need to eat things to, to heal. I mean, I'm, I am. But I had already met the mother, I had already reached certain layers of understanding the assemblage point perception so i'm not limited but any way that you can meet the mother um and spend time with her and get to know and become more and more and more connected to that flow state with her whether that's running in the forest you know find find a forest that you can go to in the middle of the morning like early, get up early and go in the morning and be alone and smell it all and feel it and face it and don't drink coffee just go out there and do it and wake yourself up whatever it is like you know get off caffeine like that's that's just keep you can't alkaline on caffeine so you're always going to feel you're always on a drug if you're on caffeine to start your day doesn't matter what kind of caffeine i'm sorry eventually you know i figured it out right i use so much caffeine that i want past the caffeine like so i'm not saying you can't do it but damn you gotta you gotta be fucking ballsy you gotta almost like microdose all the time or know how to balance your your energy so you're never letting the drugs limit you i don't know how to explain that but that's that's a hard path to take and so my teachers would say, you can't tell people what you're doing because then they'll think they can do what you're doing and what you're doing is so not really a way that anyone can do it. But at the same time, like, I, I'm i here to tell you that you can do whatever you want. And maybe because you've been following rules, you need to break free from them. But at the same time, why not use the rules? They work, clearly, if you're just willing to not become a fucking follower in the process because that's going to hijack you later if you if you weren't listening you know there's a lot of integration to happen later on and that's what i've had to do i was a follower but i'm lucky i was because I, I got the training i needed my future self was calling me to do all the stuff that i did that's why i, I did it otherwise i would have got out 
I, the timing was all guided. The signs were stronger than you could imagine. You guys wouldn't believe the kind of signs I get. It's not like they're not... It, it, at first, you know, your signs are kind of like you want them to be there, so you're trying to make signs happen. But later, they get damn right down in your face, kind of fucking scary. So, it's cool. That's when you just think, okay, shit. But <laughs> there's an aspect to that. Like, my elder was making sure signs were coming to me, right? So they're not signs from the universe all the time. Like, so this, this motherfucker is sending people up on the vision quest hill and then using his ancestors to send them visions that would make sure that it accommodated his agenda because his agenda was tied to the ancestors and it was all a bunch of crazy shit that, that didn't need to happen, right? So just because this dude was really powerful and capable and helping a lot of us to hone dreaming attention and gain power doesn't mean he wasn't schizophrenic and the, the ancestors that had a hold of him weren't out of balance. And so that contradicts what I said about posthumous that you, you become detached. And, and there's a lot to look at there, how his ancestors maintained their agenda, their ego, their, um, what do you call it? Well, how, how they, yeah, they, uh, they, revenge, they were off to revenge. But at the same time, they thought what they were doing was necessary. They were actually trying to breed children in a particular way and make sure that all these things happened to counteract the royalty and the whole, like, agenda of, you know, just the feathered versus the leathered kind of, like, war shit, which is all kind of real. I mean, it is real in those layers. It's all kind of tied to the flyers and archons and all this different stuff, but um, yeah. So the way that works is they didn't really die. They went to a different layer, and so they're able to maintain and still run agenda. And that's happened countless times with all kinds of sorcery groups all over the world. And so a lot of trees all over the planet are actually old sorcerers. If you're hanging out in the redwoods in certain groves, those aren't trees, not the tree, not, they don't have the spirit of tree, but they do now. I mean, they've merged. It's incredible. And these are beautiful beings. They didn't want to leave. They were able to shape shift into something that had a longer lifespan. And they chose their location. The earth is magical and will work with you in any way that you would like. But... In the Toltec world, that action is looked down on, uh, like that it's aberrant, that it's fear-based to not die. I don't know. It's, it's a trip, right? You go from being a mobile being to being an immobile being. But is a tree immobile? A tree is a dreamer. A tree must have a dreaming astral body like we have an astral body. Have you ever gone in the wilderness alone at night? Do you think the projections of trees might come out and play with you? <clears throat> the entities of night that are so scary at first were an apprentice when a shaman takes them out. <clears throat> and the sounds you hear and the other kinds of interdimensional beings that exist. Yeah, it's a real, sh it's real. Trees are real. You're real. I'm real. Every little bug you go to kill, an ant, they're all, they all have consciousness. They're all powerful, aware beings. Um, but earth, life begins at conception. It's insane that we even talk as if that's a question, right? So that's very, 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 very important to to not, I mean, just to come to terms with. For some reason, we can't seem to, common sense is so far from reality now, like, or the, the core reality, the matrix, the control matrix. So the control matrix is crashing, you guys. It's going away. If you stay connected to it, it's going to hurt. It's going to pull you off the cliff. But it's going to take a long time to disassemble. And so we're being given plenty of time to heal and it has nothing to do with events or timing. 
or anything like that. We need to truly come to terms with the fact that um, we, we need the time to change and that it has nothing to do with when this event or that event happens. So face yourself, face your life, come to terms with what you need to do to make sure that you can provide for yourself and don't rely on anything outside of you. And then you'll feel, you won't, you'll stop feeling all that anxiety. And so I'm just here to help with that. Like this is, this is pretty key that we start getting really um, holistic about everything and that we aren't living in the future. Because if you're trying to live into something that could be, then you're not living in the present and then you're gonna you're just gonna have anxiety so it's okay um we don't want anxiety and so the thing you think is the scary thing to do is probably the thing you need to do to un un undo the anxiety um i can help with that my teachers helped me with that it's it's just like Real basic shit, like writing some shit down on a piece of paper and looking at it and we're like, oh shit, it was always right in front of you. Um, so you, we spin our wheels for a long time sometimes, thinking that we can't get help, that we need to figure it all out on our own. It's true, you do, and you can, but it's okay to ask for help. It's a powerful poem I read today. It's just, I mean, I think you probably have heard it. You start dying slowly if you do not travel, if you do not read, if you do not listen to the sounds of life, if you do not appreciate yourself. You start dying slowly when you kill your self-esteem, when you do not let others help you. You start dying slowly if you become a slave of your habits, walking every day on the same paths, if you do not change your routine, if you do not wear different colors, or you do not speak to those you do not know. You start dying, dying so slowly if you avoid to feel passion and their turbulent emotions, those which make your eyes glisten and your heart beat fast. You start dying slowly if you do not change your life, when you are not satisfied with your job or with your love, if you do not risk what is safe for the uncertain, if you do not go after a dream, if you do not allow yourself at least once in your lifetime to run away from sensible advice. So it's, you know, it's powerful. It's, um, we do have to unplug from the matrix, even though all of the sensible advice tells us not to, but we have to do it also in a way that's realistic with where we're at so that we don't overcommit and shock or overdo our Kundalini. It just doesn't work unless you're ready. And so a lot of people are causing a lot of unnecessary shame and guilt and confusion. Um, but that's part of it too. And then if you're working with a teacher that's putting pressure on you to change, that creates morbidity. Um, it's unhealthy and shame ends up occurring and shame is the lowest vibration and then they can't help you get out of it because they don't know that they got you into it. Right? So that's where you're like, oh shit. I really got to reassess this. So some of the greatest teachers just don't know that basic concept and it's causing a lot of pain and a lot of injury. Um, but you know, I mean, we've come a long way, we've come a long way, right? Because we've come from a time in which there was, at least for me, nowhere to turn to. I, there, that's why I was so desperate. I could tell that the world was fucked up and I was just looking for anybody that had any idea and everywhere I looked, it just was, everyone was conforming. So if anybody that could see through it was going to be able to get me to, to go along their way. And I, so I was very susceptible. And there's kind of a huge story to that, right? I mean, that's, that's a big, and then, but what, then what I've been shown throughout my whole life has been really key to right now. So I've been guided. I just didn't know it. And now that I know I'm guided, it's like you get to look back and see how much you were guided all along. And so I can see how much you guys are being guided even though you don't realize you're being guided. So what you think are difficult things are actually necessary teachings and what you think what you want are not necessarily the things that spirit wants you to have. 
because spirit has an has a has a has work for you an assignment a task a purpose but it's not none of those things it's just surrender it's surrender without surrender it's the contradiction yeah so we're we're doing the dopest shit right now because we're unbinding from the control matrix strategically not recklessly we're transitioning from the old guard to a, a highly more effective and efficient honest system of emotional intelligence because we're willing to face the shadow the reason the collective shadow is being exposed right now is because there's enough people doing the inner shadow work on their own that just triggers it and then there's a lot of teachers out there that were that aren't seeing it and they are powerful and they're going into some weird contraction because they can't understand what's happening to their reality and they're at, they're like pulling their knowledge in as if it's something they can hold on to as if it's theirs to protect it's based on an old model so they're not they're not witnessing the transition they they weren't paying attention to the details of the dream spell they were just looking in a different way of thinking and they thought the world was going to go along with this dystopian spell and they were positioned to sort of be like in place for it and then so their vision felt is falling apart because that was all a lie that that whole dream that we saw about the dystopian world i mean even though it's it is playing out it doesn't have the energy behind it that we thought because it needed us to make it happen so we were the projectors and we were being fed the story and we were supposed to put it up on the big screen but a lot of us stopped doing that and then that start started to people were like looking over across the way like well why aren't they playing the same movie and then that's starting to happen really fast now and so a lot of stuff's going to dis disassemble and if you're still really tied to, to to that assembly that doesn't mean you can't be part of it and make you know your, your money in that world and 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 watch it all collapse while you're in it and you can because i'm doing that i'm not i'm not attached to how things collapse because they're not going to collapse like it, it, it it's just sort of it's just going to sort of get just really more and more it's going to penetrate the world the obvious stuff that is 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 occurring is going to to get really really unsensible more and more and it's how the world wakes up but there's going to be conflict and contraction around that from services to goods to products to information to health advice to you know they're getting all the natural paths are being forced they can no longer bring the medicines from other countries that they need to do natural medicine like ivs you can't run ivs for people that have you know alternative forms of cancer therapies they're coming after all of it you guys so it's just a really contracting moment and they're saying all healthcare workers have to be you know take the poison in order to be a healthcare worker so all the chiropractors that aren't going to do that like everything's going to go black market underground people are going to get arrested shit's going to get crazy you got to take care of yourself there's no one there's not going to be anybody to to get those kind of services from they're going to require that they shove that fucking thing up the back of your brain if you want to fucking go into a building or give them some form of your dna which don't do don't if you know i've never done that there's no i've never worn a mask i've never given them that information or that test but none of that matters i mean i'm not going to let any of it interfere with my journey regardless um but there are always ways around these things if you're patient and you're not at odds with the world um but we're here to usher in a new dream and we need all people on board that are able to see any aspect of truth so it doesn't matter what type of hypnosis you've undone it's a gift and then hopefully you as as you share that gift with the world you learn from others that have taken on 
or undone a different aspect of their hypnosis. So these ego deaths that are happening to my friends are powerful. They are going through things because they're on the fence and they weren't fully on board and now they're being forced to come to, to the energy side. I know it's uncomfortable. I know we all want to hold on to the old stuff, but um, it's coming off. So even those of you that think you're, the information matters, that's, that's part of the veil. You've become a slave to information. You've become a slave to, you know, a story. This We're more magical than that. Slavery isn't an option moving into the new cycle. It's a it's very contracted. We're we're moving into a much faster, expansive assembly and disassembly. Disassembly into assembly. Assembly into disassembly. They're the same. In Aikido you're never moving backwards, but it looks like you are. You're just moving in a very dynamic way. It's it's always a contradiction. It just and then, then there's people that are doing it wrong and then it, therefore it is backwards so it's not like you can cheat or lie or 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 reverse engineer something unless you know how to engineer it <laughs> that's the way the old witches man the old ones had to be dabble in the in the in the in the harm in order to know how to cure and so knowledge was in a very very heavy place for a long time um, it's hard to explain, but we're we're still dealing with all of that. That's sorcery is real, and um, we're all capable of being helpful. Moving forward, we all have the ability. We all are all sorcerers. We are all dreamers. We all have that door that opens when we die, and so we're all connected to eternity. We're all part of this incredible transformation we're in. And shamans have already gone through these transformations that a lot of us are heading into. So there's a lot to gain from their perspective. And we can still do it privately like they did, but still share and be, you know, involved in the more collective one. And then eventually human mass is going to... to make all the difference in the world and we're all going to be able to come together and decide on a beautiful way of of determining the future and we, we will dream it into being and just like we had dreamt this dystopian nightmare this far we will dream something much more holistic and balanced and others have already been working hard on that so the work's in the background you know you can replace each system with a new one there's an engine that runs on fumes that would revolutionize the world. We can still use oil, but we don't need any of it. We just barely need any at all. It's basically free. And then we're not tied to an electrical grid. We're, we have vehicles that are independent until we switch to the magnetism and move into the old, the old technology that's been hidden from us. The vacuum or the whatever the old stuff that, that works independently, you know, that works magnetically and holistically so our, these transitions don't have to be so extreme and 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 they kind of can't we kind of have we need the time so that our chakra system can handle the change there's no huge financial shift that wants to come into your life because that would be too much people that get the lottery or all of a sudden have money it's really hard to handle so you don't want to invite that in either uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't make sound investment or anything i'm just saying don't don't trip on money don't let money be a thing for you it's a trap. Um, but if you're good at making money, you know, help others make money. Go out and start a company so that people can work somewhere dope. Step in line and do something cool, you know, when you're called to. Even though it may look like the Matrix is disassembling, we're going to rebuild it holistically. I mean, we're still going to need t-shirts and food and, you know, delivery and and, uh, you know, services and, and organization. And, and, but it's going to adjust. We're not going to be faking these jobs anymore where we were told to spend eight hours when we only need to be doing an hour of work, but we just spread it out throughout a day. We're going to work from home. We're going to crank out jobs and have multiple contracts. And 
we're all going to be working together and all these dope systems and ideas and reverse engineering the engineering and engineering the re-engineering and there's there's just intelligence platforms that are going to come out once we realize who's who and where everyone's at um these computers are magical there's there's nothing wrong with them we don't have to walk away from screens forever we can i mean i'd like to i'm down like if everyone can figure it out but in the meanwhile it's okay um don't don't make anything an enemy or a slave. Don't be a slave to something, but also don't make it an enemy. Quit fucking exaggerating everything, right? I mean, that's that's what ta that's what got us into all this is we're so easily lied to because the people that lie they make the lie so big that it couldn't possibly be a lie. Like no, it's that it's just like well they couldn't have lied about that. It's just it's it's you know it's like this whole pandemic thing. It's like well they couldn't have lied about a pandemic. It's like yeah no they did. They just had to manipulate a test. The test is just picking up the fucking common cold. They're going around the world testing and everyone's sick. You know you just it's because their bodies produced of an exosome. You don't you can't catch a virus. Your body produces viruses because. Your, your body wants to detox the poison that's in you. So if you're in a home full of someone, people that are sick, your body picks up on the fact that they're pick producing a virus to get them the, to detox you. And so you body your body wants to do the same. It's not that you're passing viruses. Um, it's same with women. If a bunch of women live in the home, they'll all end up menstruating at the same time if they live together for long periods of time because their bodies are triggered by the detox. Menstruation's a detox. That's why you don't want to be on a pill or or certain medicines that stop you from detoxing as a woman. Um, it's your. That's why you're healthier. That's why women have more power in the energetic realm, and w women can dance circles around men. Um, in the the sorcery shamanic world, men are stronger in the physical and can fight, run faster, do all the stuff typically. But that's changing, you know, um, because everything's changing. And so that whole storyline is also part of a more broader subject, but obviously it's being misused or abused. Um, the balance, though, is that women, because they're not as physical uh, or they have a different physicality, their skill set and the energetic in the dream capacity, in the healing side, in the sexual side is, is so far beyond what men are are up to at this point as of yet and so man a man has so much to learn from a woman if you can find a powerful woman in your life to guide you into the emotional process of um really coming to terms with who you are and where you're at um and just everything comes to do with the sexual shadow and so there's just that's where we heal i was watching all these women train in shamanism but they didn't know anything about their sexual power so there wasn't i didn't understand how that was being skipped but it was and it still is and people aren't and then the ones that are teaching about sexual power are extreme and exaggerative and spiritual and it's super intense and but there are some schools out there i found that are balanced now somewhat but this whole unconsciousness around medical tyranny is brought in a whole nother layer of like, how do we work with anybody when everyone's just kind of going along with these things, even if they don't believe them. Um, so it's getting really difficult. You know, we're, 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 in, we're in, a t in a tight situation, but that's good. That's where we, we, de we develop our resources and we should start, you know, if you know people that are, like we need to network and start talking about the, the midwives that are in the yoga teachers and the, the people that are, are not, you know, bowing down to this tyranny. And I know I can, I mean, I, I'll find all that online. I just am not, I don't spend much time online to figure out who's doing what. But I know it's happening. I mean, I'm tapped into some of it. And it's all going to get amazing. And I'm stoked that mm. as much as this division is difficult, it's just so revealing. The mass really revealed so much. Um the people that at this stage that are still buying into these lies it's it's really telling right so it's like okay wow we're we're this far along here and people aren't even questioning it yet 
Um, but then there's those that are scratching their heads for the first time. It's like, yeah, here we go. It's getting stupid, you guys. So it's, it's going to be really difficult for all of us. Just, you know, the berserkers are going to be difficult to, to deal with when they start to fucking freak out. Um, but anyways, it's dope. It doesn't matter. We're going to be okay. Everything's, everything's going to be incredible. Uh, supporting when you know that's going through difficult times with ego deaths and um, just remind them that it's 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 such a good sign it means you know if things are collapsing if their world is is not making sense if they're having to rearrange their priorities if if they're being forced to you know come to terms with the, the unhealthy nature of their partner or their the codependent nature of things or if they're a savior to someone and it's it's draining their energy and they have to they realize they're enabling them and that they're keeping them from healing and they have to you know, let them go and then that person is you know then reacting like it's you guys are going through it i'm going through it it's it's how we get through it these are the characters in our dream that unlock that stuff for us so we don't want, we're not looking at it like oh that drama and it shouldn't be in my life and well, I mean, you should have healthy boundaries if people are draining you unnecessarily, but some of them are there to teach you. You have to be able to turn, determine the difference. And your heart knows the difference. Don't let anyone tell you anything. You know, I I was cruel to my parents because I misunderstood the Castaneda books. I was, I did things I shouldn't have been doing. Um, I mean, what it, it isn't things I shouldn't have been doing. It's things that I did that I wish I hadn't. But it's not in a regret way. It's just like, oh, wow. You know, that that's painful. That hurts. That hurts. It hurts that I was so unconscious as my children were so young. I mean, I was pretty conscious. But, I mean, they were, to be as conscious I, as I am now, and that I go back into the dreams and then, or back into my memories, and just like, whoa. If I, they, were, they were just, you know, I was... I was in pain, I was struggling, I was trying to provide. It's it's so out of balance. Our system is so unhealthy. You know, we're just we're just sent into slaughter and and but but our, my family and I are so fucking close now, right? Because we've been through hell and back and they're just my kids are so rare. Um and so beautiful and all all of all of this forgiveness and and healing and then ego deaths and and um truly deep clarity and and guidance is coming for all of us um i hope that's happening in your inner circles if not i hope that you you know reach out and be part of this circle like we're we're all here to have a powerful interaction with the non-linear and the sooner we do that the sooner the veil in all of its aspects comes down the veil is really about shama shamanic stuff not about information at all so people have been thinking or tying the veil to this idea that has to do with like oh information coming out the truth isn't information the truth is just knowledge the truth is power the truth is energy so let's move toward that in an abstract way, in an energetic way, in a beautiful way, and not judge anyone and just work with people and not create division. Um, the division's already been created. We, we're we now here to sort of heal it. So I hope that, uh, I hope that's something that resonates for you guys. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. I'll see you soon. Okay, be well.